Hello again, everybody, and welcome to the first video in our statistical reasoning series. Uh, today we're looking at measures of central tendency, and in the textbook you guys are using, it's going to be called uh, just exploring data. So first of all, let's look at these measures of central tendency. Um, there's a few different measures, and the first measure is mean, and I'm sure that's something you've heard before. Um, a mean is the average of a set of data. To determine the mean of a set of data, add the data values and divide by the number of data values there. So if I give you this data set, which is just totally random, 31, 25, 24, 34, 31, 25, 28, 25, the first thing I have to do is add all that up, and then I'll divide by the amount of items there. So my mean will be equal to 31 plus... 25 plus 24 plus 34 plus 31 plus 25 plus 28 plus 25 all divided by the amount there and if I added that up correctly there's eight of them so if I add all that up I divide by eight I get 27 and a few decimals and I'll just round the two decimal places so 27.88 and that is how you find a mean Mode is the next measure of central tendency I'll talk about. So the mode, um, the mode is the data value that occurs most frequently. If two different data values occur with the same, with equal frequency, then there is a double mode. So ties are just fine. Again, here's that same data set, and now all I'm going to do is I'm just going to start looking for things that appear uh, more than once. So 31 I notice once, twice. Okay, so 31 is kind of in the lead so far. Um, 25 seems to appear a few times. There's once, twice, three times. And uh, the, if I scan the other numbers, nothing else pops up as much. So the mode equals 25 for this set of data. So that's mode. Now we'll look at median. The median of a set of data is the data value in the middle of the set. So when you're looking for the median number, you're looking for the middle number. To determine the median, order the values from least to greatest. If there is an odd number of data values, the median is the middle value. If there's an even number of data values, the median is the mean of the two middle values. Okay, so if there's an odd number, just the middle number, that's the mean. If, there is, if there's an even, you have to use the average idea. Okay, so our first step in this is we need to reorganize. Oh, sorry, I'm kind of getting ahead of myself. Here's my data set. Now, the first step we have to... Uh, perform is reorganize. So least to greatest or greatest to least, either one actually works, but I'll go um, least to greatest because that's, I think, makes more sense to people. So 24 and then I got my 25s. I write them all down. There was three of them. Uh, 28, 31, 31, 34. Okay, so now that I've got it organized, now, I look at my middle two numbers, and I'm just going to find the average of that. Okay, and I'll use mean instead of average, but average and mean, same idea here. Um, anyway, I can use an X with a bar over top of it. That's a short form, that's a, or a variable, or symbol. That's the word I'm looking for. That's a symbol that represents the idea of a mean. So, 25 plus 28 divided by 2. That's going to work out to 26.5. So the mean for this data would be, sorry, the median for this data is 26.5. And that's how you find a median. If it's an odd number, like I said, an odd number of data values, it's no thinking at all. Just reorganize it and it's the middle. When it's even, that's, how that, that's when we have this extra little bit we have to do. Range. The range of the data is the difference uh, the difference, sorry, between the greatest data value and the least data value. So here is my number set. And I'm just, really what I'm looking for is just how spread out this thing is. Um, so to find that range, whoa, sorry guys, my pen setting was different there. To find this range, I have to highlight the largest number, which I'd say is 34, and then the lowest number. Uh, what would that be? Looks like it's going to be 24. So, and you just find the difference. So I always go large minus small, 10. 
So the range for this data is 10, meaning there's like a 10 unit range uh, difference from the lowest to the highest. Okay, the final uh, measure of central tendency we're going to look at, or the final in this topic, I'm sorry, uh, is an outlier. So an outlier is a data value that's distant from the other values in the set. So it's always, it's a strange looking value compared to the rest of it. So if you look at this data value, or there's my data set again, I've added one in here, this 243. You can see that it doesn't seem to fit, right? So an outlier is a number that seems quite strange. It's really, really small compared to the data set, or it's really, really big compared to what you have in the data set. So for this case, I have an outlier, and it's equal to 243 you do not always have outliers. So sometimes you'll have an outlier, sometimes you do not. Okay, so that is everything uh, that I need to show you for this first topic in your textbook. Um, if it made sense, that's great. And if it didn't, make sure you talk to me or get talking to your teacher. Have a great night, everybody.